Okay. In this example, we're given a list of many numbers and we're asked to identify which of them are real numbers between negative 3 and negative 2. So remember, a real number is any number that could be graphed on the number line. And let's also remember what we mean when we use the word between in mathematics. When we talk about something being between two numbers, it means it's neither of those numbers. It's the same way we actually use it in English. If I say I'm standing between John and Susan, well, I'm somewhere in the middle of them. I'm not standing on top of John, and I'm not standing on top of Susan. It's the same way for a number line. So we're looking here, numbers between negative 3 and 2 don't include negative 3 and negative 2. And I see some of those on our list right there, so we can cross them right out. It's not going to be negative 2 or negative 3, because that's not between negative 3 or negative 2. To start thinking about the other numbers here, I think it's helpful to have a number line that shows the values you know, of interest here, negative 3 and negative 2. There's the two numbers we were given. So when I drew my number line, I started with 0. That's always helpful. And then I counted backwards until I got to the numbers I needed, and I counted backwards a little further. And it might also be nice to show some numbers in the positive direction, so we'll put a 1 in there, too. Now notice, well, for our answer for this question, we're going to select any number that, if I graphed it, would fall in, the, in somewhere in that interval. So let's start looking at our options. The first option we're given is negative 2.3 or negative 2 and 3 tenths. If we think about how to graph this number, we start at 0, we go back 1, 2 whole numbers, and a little bit further. Negative 2.3 would be somewhere about here, negative 2 and 3 tenths. So that works. That does fall between negative 2 and 3. You can think about the fraction 7 over 1, which reduces to the whole number 7. The first thing I notice when I look at that is that's a positive number. So a positive number is going to be way on the other side of my number line, nowhere close to these two negative numbers. So that's out. Okay, now I have the decimal number, negative 2.640634. Well, that would be a pain to graph exactly because I'd have to draw, you know, about 100,000, more than 100,000 little lines between, uh, on the number line between every two whole numbers. But we can estimate where that number is. Our whole number part of it is, is a negative 2. So we go back from 0, negative 1, negative 2, and how much more? Well, about 0.64 more. We don't get all the net way to negative 3, we just get somewhere close to it. So this works. It's falling in between negative 2 and negative 3. So that works. Let's look at pi now. If you remember pi, that's a symbol that's used to represent a number that goes on and on forever. It begins with 3.1415. 926, it goes on and on and on. But the important thing here to notice is that this is a positive number. If I were to graph this, it would be somewhere on the positive side of the number line. So that is not between negative 3 and 2. Similarly, when I see the value of 2, if I were going to graph that, that would be up here. That's not in between negative 2 and 3, so that's out. Here I've got negative 196.85. If I were to graph that, I'd first look at the whole number part, negative 196. So I need to start at 0 and go backwards 196 steps. So if I were to graph that on the number line, it would be somewhere way the heck this direction. So it's not between negative 2 and negative 3. Next option is 0. If I look at 0, I can see there it is on the number line. It's not between negative 2 and negative 3, so that's out. How about this one, negative 3.359366. To graph this, I first go from 0 and step back 1, 2, 3 steps. And then I go a little bit further. I go to 0.359366, so somewhere up here. So we can see it's close to the values of interest, negative 3 and negative 2, but it's not falling between them. It's outside them. So this is also not between negative 3 and negative 2. Our next option, negative 3.3, is very similar. I go back from 0, 3 steps backwards, and a little bit more, negative 3 steps somewhere out there. It's close to negative 3, but it's not between negative 3 and negative 2. Now let's look at negative 2.7. I start at 0 and I go backwards 2 steps and 7 tenths more of a step. So I go backwards quite a bit, but not all the way to 3. So negative 2.7, that works. That is between negative 3 and 2. And our last one here, negative 1.7. So I start at 0 and I go backwards 1 step and then 7 tenths more gets me almost all the way to negative 2 
but not all the way there. So it's close to the interval of interest, but it's not between negative 2 and negative 3. So to summarize, the three values that would be between negative 3 and negative 2 are going to be negative 